Hey Dragons, this lesson is over solving multi-step equations and the process of doing that. This starts Unit 3, and this is Day 1, and it's going to be Tuesday and Wednesday. So, before we begin, we need to know something called the distributive property. Now, the distributive property is going to be a number that is multiplied by a group, which means I'm going to have parentheses, which includes either addition and or subtraction. And that's really the only writing we're going to do today. Um, a number multiplied by a group which includes addition and or subtraction. So and or means it can be one or the other or both. Now I don't want you to write this down. It's going to suck the time. Don't rock, uh, write this down. I want you to just watch. Okay, so this is an example of the distributive property. Whenever we had, back in elementary school, 5 times 3, we had 5 groups of 3. And we have 5 groups of 3 illustrated right here. We know that we have a total of, well, 5 times 3, or simply 15. Now, I can rewrite the 3 using addition or subtraction. And in this case, I'm going to say that 3 is going to be replaced with 2 plus 1. So now that's how I get to this right here. It's going to be the same problem. This time I have five groups of two and five groups of one. So if I take a look at the picture of that, here's my five groups of two, and here is my one, uh, five groups of one. But if you notice, I still have 15. This time it, it comes as two times five, which is 10 and I have 5 times 1. So this is an example of the distributive property. Notice I'm still going to get 15. We can do the same thing with the same problem, but I want to illustrate that we can have a group of subtraction as well. Here's 5 times 3. We still know that's 15, but I'm going to rewrite 3 as 4 minus 1. So, if I have four groups of five, but now I'm going to take away one of those, um, or five of those groups of one, I'm going to just get rid of those right there. They're not there, and so you notice I wind up with, well, I wind up with 15. So the distributed property is multiplication. Five times four gave me 20 to begin with, and then I'm going to subtract five times one, or five. Notice I still get 15. So that is an elementary arithmetic version of the distributive property. So keep that in mind as we come back over here. We're going to need the distributive property in algebra to look at examples such as this. So we have 5 times, let's say, the group x minus 6. We're going to need to get rid of those parentheses. And we do have a number multiplied by a group that's being, in this case, subtracted. So I'm going to distribute, which is multiplication, the 5 to everything in the group. So the 5 times x is 5 times x minus, and then 5 times 6. So I wind up with 5x minus 30. Notice I can't do anything else with this because these are not like terms. So if I have something like 4 times 2a plus 3, I'm going to multiply a 4 times a 2a. Now the only thing I can multiply here is 4 times 2, which gives me 8. Let the a tag along. But I also need to do 4 times 3. I got a plus sign, let that come in. And there we go. Those are examples of the distributive property. So let's dive right in and let's do an example. So I'm going to do one side of the problem and then I'm going to stop it for Ed Puzzle and then you're going to try to fill out the other side. So let's write down this problem as example number one. We have 9x minus 3 times the group x minus 3 is equal to 4x minus 2 times the group x plus 1.5. Okay? 
So as we take a look at this particular problem right here, what we want, ultimately down here, we're going to want to have x by itself. And some people say that we have 1x, and it's the same thing. I want x to have a coefficient of 1 ultimately. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the parentheses by distributing. Now, in my case, I'm doing the left side. You're going to do the right. I'm going to look at this 3, and I'm going to ask myself, well, what is the sign of that? The sign of the 3 is a negative, so I'm distributing a negative 3. So negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And now a negative 3 multiplied by this guy. Now, how am I going to treat this 3? Am I going to treat it as a positive or a negative? I look in front. I'm going to treat that as a negative. So what is a negative 3 times a negative 3? A negative times a negative is a positive. And this guy just kind of falls down into the next line. And so after distribution, I've got this right here. So pause the, uh, the Ed Puzzle will pause and we want you to work the right hand side and pick what you think that this should simplify to. All right, hopefully you looked at this and you did it the same way as I did over here. I'm going to distribute a 2, but what kind of 2? I look in front, that's a negative. So a negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. A negative 2 times a positive, uh-oh, what's a negative times a positive? If you don't know, use your calculator. A negative times a positive is a negative. 2 times 1.5 is 3. And we slide the 4x down over here. So we, first of all, we distributed to get rid of the parentheses. So now what we're going to do is we are going to collect like terms on each side. So um, if I'm looking over here and I'm working the problem by myself, I'm going to say, okay, on this left-hand side over here, what am I like terms? Uh, well, this has an x and so does this, and so we're going to say those are like terms. So I can actually combine the coefficients of 9 minus 3. 9 minus 3 is going to be 6 in front of the x. Notice the x did not change. The x's stay in x. The only thing that changed were the coefficients. When you are combining like terms, you are combining the coefficients, the numbers that are multiplied by the variable. All right, I can't do anything with this because this 9 doesn't have an x. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to simplify the right-hand side, and Ed Puzzle will ask you for your answer. All right, hopefully you realize right here this is 4x minus 2x is 2x. And the minus 3, well, it'll stay a minus 3 because this guy over here doesn't have an x. All right, so now we'll get to the third step in our process. We're going to make zeros and ones. Um, zero pairs and one, coefficient of one. We want that coefficient of one right here. So we're actually doing our PEMDAS. We're going to do our addition and subtraction first. So if I want the x's to be over here, I'm going to zero this out. So how do I make 2x become a zero so there are no x's on the right side? That's right. I'm going to subtract 2x. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. And now I can actually subtract the coefficient. 6 minus 2 is 4 in front of the x. So now I have the x's where I want them. I'll bring down this plus 9 because I can't throw it in the trash. And now 0 minus 3 is simply a negative 3. All right, so I want you to go ahead and zero out um, this guy because it doesn't have an x, and I want you to pull it to the other side using a zero. All right, so hopefully, uh, after you did the Ed Puzzle, hopefully you said, you know, if I want to make this into a zero, I've got to subtract nine. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. All right, so now I'm left with 4x plus zero, which is 4x, and negative three minus nine is a negative 12. Now, I still want to get a 1 as a coefficient, but I can only use the numbers in my problem. Well, how can I use a 4 to get it into a 1? Well, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to divide by the coefficient of 4. What I do to one side, I do to the other. What's 4 divided by 4? It's 1. 1 in front of the x is what I want. And now all I have to do over here is divide negative 12 by 4 and I get 3. My answer is x equals 3. So let's take a look at the process. 
What was my process? I don't know if I can do a little side by side here. I have it typed out here. You can pause if you need to, or it'll probably be hanging up in a classroom sign somewhere near you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to distribute. Some problems won't have parentheses. If you don't have parentheses, you don't have to distribute. All right, and what did we do next? Remember, dis distribution got rid of the parentheses, so then we collected like terms on each side. And then we made zeros and ones. Remember, we make zeros with addition and subtraction, and we make ones with multiplying and dividing. Zeros and ones. We're going to do this first. We're going to make zero pairs first, and then we're going to make ones. And that's what happened over here. We made zeros to have the terms go to one side or the other, and then finally we made a one, there's my one, in order to get my final answer. So there's the process right there, if you need to pause it in there. Um, it'll be, like I said, if you're in my room, you'll have a poster somewhere. Let's do one more and we'll call it a video. All right, so let's do this one right here. Let's do example two, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to do one side, and Edpuzzle will ask you to do the other. So this one is going to involve fractions. I hope I haven't already freaked some people out. But remember, your calculator can handle fractions should you need it. As we go through the process here, do we need to distribute? Well, do we have parentheses? The answer is yes. All right. So I think I'm pretty good with fractions, uh, but again, if you need to do yours with calculator, go ahead. 3 fourths of 12, 3 fourths times 12 is going to be 9 in front of this x. So 3 fourths of 12 is 9 in front of the x, but I have to make sure that I take 3 fourths of 8. 3 fourths times 8 on the calculator will give me 6. These are not like terms, so I can stop with step number 1. All right, would you please distribute the right side and pick the answer on Ed Puzzle? All right, if we distribute, one-fourth of four is one, but a positive times a negative is a negative. So this is going to be a negative one x. I'm going to leave that there for emphasis. And then a fourth of eight. If I, you have one-fourth of eight dollars, how much do you have? Well, you have two dollars. Okay, so now... Uh, collect like terms on each side of the equal sign. Well, I don't have any like terms. The, this guy doesn't have an x, so these guys are not like, not like terms, and this guy doesn't have an x. All right, so I'm going to go to step three. I'm going to make zeros and ones. Okay, so uh, I want my final answer to be a 1x equals something down here, so I'm going to move my x is going to zero this guy out. How do I make this a zero? Well, I'm going to add 1x, and if I add 1x over here, I do the same thing over here. So that becomes 0, so that means that 2 is now by itself, and 9 plus 1 is 10x. Bring the 6 down here, and we're ready to go. All right, so would you please uh, make me another 0 pair that would isolate the 10x? All right. Hopefully, you subtracted 6 from both sides. Again, there's another 0. And I'm left with 10x is now equal to 2 minus 6, which is a negative 4. All right. So I've zeroed out. Now I need to make a 1. So I have 10x, but I need one of them. So how can I use a 10 in order to get a 1? And you're right. Okay, there went the mouse and the batteries all over the place. All right, so I'll divide. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So I actually get a negative fraction for an answer. And you know what? That's okay. Life is not full of integers. So my answer is in negative four-tenths. Or if I want the decimal, that would be negative 0.4. Or if I want a reduced fraction, I can say negative two-fifths. My video is less than 30 minutes.